color stabilizer is found under the color correction category. And I have this archival footage of a woman folding up her TV because that's something that you do. And something common with archival footage that was shot on film and transferred to digital is flicker. And you can see that in the background. This is just an artifact of film being projected by light. And sometimes this can be a result of the transfer process of film to digital. But Color Stabilizer can attempt to correct this kind of flicker. So I'm gonna apply that effect right on top of this footage and my colors are gonna go all wonky. So I'm just gonna disable the effect so we're not seeing the result. And let's talk about the controls. We have the stabilize method where we have three different options for brightness, levels, and curves, and we'll talk about that in a second. Black point control, which is just a point, midpoint and white point, again, just points, and sample size. The sample size is how large in pixels each one of these points is sampling colors from the layer you've applied it to. Now I'm gonna change stabilize to brightness. When you have it on this mode, it's only going to affect the brightness of your image. It won't adjust anything having to do with colors. So what I wanna do in this mode is choose a point on my frame that is close to black. And I'll go to a frame where I'm happy with the overall brightness. So I'm gonna to go to right about here, I like that exposure. And then right here is nice and dark. It's probably not perfectly black, but it's pretty close. And then I'll just grab this little crosshair on that black point and click right where I want it, and then turn the effect back on. Now, we don't really see much of a change, and that's okay, but by default, this effect is sampling the first frame of the footage, and I wanna sample this frame that I'm viewing right now at this point in time, so I'm gonna click this Set Frame button right at the top. Now it's going to base the brightness value of that point right at this point in time. My sample size is only three pixels. I could probably increase that to maybe 10 just to get a more average sample of that color. And then I'll play this back. Now we're still seeing a little bit of flicker and it's really hard to know what exactly has changed if you're not familiar with the footage. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this clip and remove color stabilizer. So we're back to where we were and then change the blend mode from normal to difference, which is off screen, but it's just past the midpoint, difference. And my entire screen goes black. Now, what black means is that there is no difference between this layer and what's below it. So if I scrub through here and we don't see any difference, that means the effect hasn't done anything. So I'll turn off the top layer and let's just interactively move this black point to someplace else. As you can see, as I move this, you can see the change in exposure. Now you don't wanna put any of these points over top of a part of the footage where lots of changes are happening, like where this woman is moving, you can see that this is drastically changing everything, and that's really going to give you inaccurate brightness because it's trying to stabilize the brightness of this image based on that point throughout the duration of your clip. So in reality, this effect really only works on locked off shots where things aren't going to obstruct the points that you're sampling. So again, I'm gonna move this over to maybe a little bit further down and now see if there's a difference between the unaffected and the affected version. There's a little bit of flickering going on now. So this flicker is what the color stabilizer effect is removing when we're in the brightness stabilize mode. It isn't all that noticeable, it's a very slight flicker, but that's what it's attempting to do is correct that exposure change. Now, as soon as we switch our stabilized mode to levels or curves, it's not only going to adjust the overall brightness, but also the colors. So I'll switch it to levels, and the image is updated because we now have both a black and white point control. So I need to do the same process I did with the black point, but for a white point in my image or something that's pretty bright. I'm again going to disable the effect so I see the original footage, and I'm gonna choose this point right here. I'm just gonna click and drag that white point over there because that is fairly bright. I can even zoom in a little bit closer and choose this brighter part of the frame to be my white point. Then I'll turn the effect back on and play this back. We're definitely seeing some flickering, but we're also getting some color shift. If I zoom in right here on these shadows of the plant and play it back, you can see that that's getting brighter and darker and even changing colors at points. But if we take a look at the frame, and play this back, it's pretty much staying 100% consistent throughout. Whereas if I turn this off, you can see that flickering more pronounced. So while it's maintaining the brightness of this part of the frame, other parts of the image are kind of suffering because of it. Let's turn that original back on and see if there's much of a difference here. And now you can see that not only is it flickering, it's actually changing colors a little bit and you can faintly see the outline of the actress right here. So it's a bigger difference than before. Not necessarily a better difference, but it's making more of a difference. 
Let's change stabilize to curves now. And what this is going to do is give us a midpoint control where again, I will select a point in my image that serves as a mid tone and try to make that consistent throughout the image. So I'm gonna choose this speaker panel on the TV right here. Let's find that midpoint control right in the center there and I'll move it to the center of that frame, turn the effect back on and then play back. And now we're getting a lot of flicker. It's actually making it worse. And the colors are even shifting a lot more. And this is something that you just have to play around with until you find a point in your image for all three of these controls that works fairly well. But again, if I zoom in here at that speaker box and play back, you'll notice that this is staying fairly consistent throughout now, as well as this white part of the frame. It's just because this footage was pretty flickery to begin with that everything else is kind of suffering from the adjustments it's making to keep those points consistent. Let's turn our original back on and take a look at the difference. And sure enough, there's even more of a difference now between the original and the affected versions of this film. Now, according to the After Effects user guide, this can be really useful for exposure adjustments, maybe in time-lapse photography or stop-motion animation. If the camera wasn't set manually, then it might have some fluctuation with the auto exposure. That might be a better use case for this effect, but again, it really depends on the footage because if it's not a locked off shot where you can sample points in the image that don't move around throughout the entire shot and are not obstructed, it's not gonna work at all. But that's what Color Stabilizer is designed to do, and hopefully now you have a pretty good understanding of how it works. But that's Color Stabilizer in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.